read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back everybody hey welcome lady listeners to another week we have the second half of spades queen today yes balani ray she's with us this week with a brand new full-length audiobook which we really appreciate. So thanks for giving us this book and letting us highlight all your other stuff this week, Lonnie. So um, before we get to the second half, we're going to talk a little bit because I bought something the other day for my husband that I thought was really interesting and he thought I was crazy. So I keep seeing he loves sour candy, any kind of sour, like he loves, what are the little kids so, with the, Sour Patch Kids. He loves those. The sour watermelon candy. Like any, mm -hmm. he loves gummy bears. Oh my, I've never met a ma a grown man that loves gummies as much as he does. I love gummy bears. I know you do. Y'all both love the world's best gummies. Mm -hmm. That big, like huge, gigantic bag. Those are, y'all both love those. That's, he's obsessed. Those are his favorite. They have them at Cracker Barrel. We went there like a couple weeks ago when we were traveling. And uh, we were going to see my in-laws. And we stopped there to eat and they had like a wall of them with all these different like crazy flavors and stuff. He just got a huge bag of them. Like he was just dumping them in. The, I was like, what are you doing? He's like, they're for later. Okay. They sell the snack pack ones at my gas station that I always go to. Yes. He loves them. So anyways, I kept seeing these Facebook ads for those kind of sour candies with like a, a spicy chili like glaze. Huh. It's, it sounds that weird. That sounds like something my husband might like. He likes yeah. sour and spicy. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought too, because he likes sour and spicy. So they take, you can order all different kinds. I got the gummy, I got the gummy worms and I got the sour watermelons, the sour patch watermelons. And they, it's like, it's almost like a syrup. It's like a chili sticky syrup and they put the candy in it and they roll it around in the sticky, like chili spicy syrup and then let it dry. So that it's sort of like spicy and chewy and sour and sweet. And I was like, this sounds perfect. So I ordered them. And I'm like, happy Valentine's Day. Look what came. And he's like, what the fuck is this? And he's like, I'm not going to eat that. <laughs> like he was immediately like, I don't think you so. You didn't even try it? I was like, I said, you know what? I'll eat one and you, I'll tell you how it is. It was horrible. <laughs> it was so bad that I could not get the taste out of my mouth. It was so bad. I said, you cannot eat this. And he said, by the look on your face, I'm not going to try one. It was, it was like, I would have had to try one. I'm like, give me one. Let me see. <laughs> he smelled the bag and he was like, no, it was, it was like the chili you put in like a, like a, a chili, like a bean chili. Mm -hmm. You know, like a, yes. Okay. It was like, like chili like that. It wasn't I thought even you were thinking, spicy. I thought, for some reason, I thought it was going to be like Chinese chili. Yes. I thought it was going to be like sriracha or yeah, something. something, you know, like, like a spicy, a that's what I, I thought. I the chili that, that I like to yes. get my coconut shrimp in. Yes. N it was not that. This was like, like, like chili bean chili. It was so gross. <laughs> I cannot stress enough how gross this was. But I keep seeing videos for it and people love this shit. And I thought maybe I just got the wrong thing. So if you're out there and you're listening to this and you like these things, tell me what did I order that was wrong? Because this can't be the thing that everybody likes. It was terrible. It There was no sweet. It was chili, bitter, kind of like not really spicy, maybe spicy. I don't think it didn't burn my mouth and I'm a wimp. And it was just, oh, it was so strange. I couldn't get past it. So just FYI, there, don't get those for your loved ones for Valentine's. They'll be disappointed. Oh, oh well. I, I haven't got anything for my husband. For, I forgot. Isn't it for him <laughs> and me? I know. I think so. I think so. You don't have to get him anything. I got Peyton something. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's I all that matters. I that see you feeling that matters. So. No, it's okay. I'm gonna call my daughter when the sneakers come. That's her Valentine's. 
<laughs> no, he's in charge. I will say my husband's in charge of getting everybody else's Valentine's. Like he has to get everybody's. But really, I only get him something. Like he he doesn't really get much. I get him like a card or some candy. Apparently, the candy I got was shit though. So not that this year. I got the idea of I have a couple of single friends, and I mm -hmm. made like baskets. I gotta ship them out this week. Oh, I'm still waiting sweet. for one little thing. Yeah, I like went to Bath and Body Works. I hope they're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Bath and Body Works and got a few candles and then like a fluffy blanket, and then I'm gonna put my favorite snacks in. That's so sweet. I just thought it was something. That I don't is. Know. I love that. So you're sending me one? I said my single friends. I don't care. You're sending me <laughs> one. <laughs> oh my God. I saw uh, somebody posted up in headquarters that meme that said, I'm tired of everyone who has been in or came out of my vagina. <laughs> and I was like, yes. That's a good one. <laughs> I know. Who has been in or came out of my vagina. <laughs> but um, I did sort of make up for the shitty candy this week because it's Girl Scout cookie season. And I was in here and I'm in all the cookies are in my office. There's a whole wall in front of me, like cases of cookies, like right in front of me. And so I was in here and I was about ready to record. And I had my headphones on and my husband like came and like pushed on the door. And I was like, I said, it's okay. I'm not recording yet. And he's still like real quiet, like sneaking. I was like, I'm not recording. And he like walked past my desk. I was like, what are you? And he goes and gets a box of cookies. And he like puts it under his shirt and he sneaks back out. I was like, what the fuck are you doing, dumbass? I need to order some because there's not going to be any to sell. Usually they sell outside of the price dropper here and there's not going to, they're not doing no, this year. That's how I was going to say there. Our council has limited. Um, they sent a list of what we can do and it's like this long. <laughs> they said you can do a drive through um, booth. So if a car has the ability to just pull up and drive and keep and keep going, then they can do it. You can do a booth like that. But then nobody can get out and approach a table and the girls can't I don't think they're allowed to touch anything. I think the parents have to hand I don't know. It's something like that. And like you cannot you're supposed to normally you're supposed to have two adults and four girls at a booth. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying you can't have more kids than one family and all this. It's just, it's such a, it's so many different regulations that it's pretty much wedged you out of doing them. Yeah. So like our, my troop leader came over tonight and delivered my cookies and stuff. And we were talking and she's like, she said, nobody in our troop qualifies to do a booth. And I said, well, the best place for us to do it is in front of our house because it is, is like a drive through because mm -hmm. we're on a, the main street. So we sit in front of the yard and we have a sign up that says like Girl Scout cookies stop here and people will pull in and then we have a little menu that we hold up for them to look at and they'll say which ones they want. And then we bag it up and we hand them the bag and I take Venmo. <laughs> I forgot about you have even the cute outfits you had made. Yeah, I made the big cookie things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that. It was so hold awesome. On. You want to see it? Hang on. I'll go get it. It's right you here. still have it? Yeah. She's going to get a picture or she's going to bring it on. If you watch us on YouTube, you'll be able to uh, see it. She just ran from her desk. Here she comes. It's so awesome. Like how cute is this, right? It is so cute. It's a Thin Mint. <laughs> thin Mint is my favorite. I like to take Thin Mint and I crack it up and then I'll put it in another kind of ice cream. Do you know like... I had a I had a thin mint before I came in here, and by I had a thin mint, I had a sleeve of thin mints. What's the thing? Thin mints are scary because after you eat one, it's almost you like just, you brush your teeth. It's refreshing. It doesn't feel heavy. It's like, it's like, like a refreshed. <laughs> whatever they put in, like Lay's potato chips, they put in thin mint cookies. I swear to God, because you eat one and then you take a breath, and then all of a sudden they're gone. <laughs> and you're like, what just happened? What the fuck? I just ate 15 cookies in, a, in three seconds. They just go so fucking fast. So, you know, it is what it is. But that was the first box I opened up and it's already gone. I opened it up today and it's gone. So, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's Girl Scout cookie season. And, you know, normally we're able to sell a lot because we're able to go to different booths. You guys sell a ton. You really, you work it like every freaking weekend. We do. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say my oldest one, Lydia, man, she's motivated. 
Like she wants prizes. She's like, how can we get prizes with this? She was out there on Saturday from 11 to four in our front yard selling cookies. She Aww. was, I know she was so good. She was such a little trooper. And like Hallie would come out and say, I want to sell cookies. And she'd leave like five minutes later. <laughs> she'd come out and she'd be like, what are we playing? What's the, what's the game? <laughs> One of the game is to sell cookies. She's like, I don't like this game. That sounds like my kids. And Peyton would be like, okay, I'm done. Isabel's like, we're doing this. We're beating everybody. <laughs> That's how Lydia's. Who's she next? Win. Up. Uh -huh. Well, she had set her cookie goal last year at 500 and she sold them. So this year she said 500, but she's like, I really want to do a thousand. She's like, but I don't want to put a thousand because then I won't reach my goal. So she's like, I want to put 500 so I know I reach it. It sounds so, like yeah. my Apple Watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did the same thing where you keep the count, you keep like the calorie count low or the steps. Yeah. Or whatever. yeah it's, it's like 500. Yeah. Where you're like, oh yeah, I'll do that in my sleep. I can shit out that. <laughs> so yeah. I got this thing the other day um, and I'm kind of obsessed with it. It is one of those um, like suction things for your pores on your nose. It like sucks out the blackheads. Have you seen mm -hmm. those? So my nose I is like. I think it rolled past my thing and I thought it was one of those clit thingies. <laughs> I think now that you well, said that, that. I would not want this thing on my clit. This thing is like, it is powerful. Do you like it? I have, I, I don't know. I would be I, like holding down people in the family. Like, let's try this on you. I know. That's what I wish I could do. So I think I have pretty good skin other than my nose. Like I don't have a lot of breakouts and stuff, but the pores on my nose are gigantic for some reason. And it looks like I have blackheads all over my nose, but I, I don't know what it is. Like I use the pore strips. I like scrub it. I have, I'm still doing my whole Korean beauty 10 step skincare thing. Yeah, really? Yeah. I still do most of them. I do like, I'll do a double cleanse every day. I do like the, I do the toner, the emulsion and the ampoule or whatever. I do that. And then I do a moisturizer. So oh, I do it. Terrible. I, I usually do, do at closer. least six steps. I don't, I'm not, I don't do it twice a day. I usually do the whole six steps once a day. And then I'll like at night, I'll just like wash my face off, which is like the worst because the night's the one time you want to do it. But anyways, I like, I'll do a scrub. Like I'll do, I don't know what the fuck it is about my nose that like, I feel like it can't, I can't get it clear. Like that's the only part of my skin that's not clear or that doesn't have any sort of breakouts or anything. But that's anyways. I probably should. I should probably be like, what the fuck's up with my nose? Because it's been like this my whole life. Tell me what's wrong. I, that's one of the things I was sad that I put off for so long was going to a real dermatologist. Are like you still taking medicine for your face or do you not have to take it anymore? Like you're done I forever? I don't, like I've gotten one small pimple since I got was on Accutane, God, over a year ago. God, that's crazy. But your skin looks I, fantastic now. I don't think that I create something. I don't know, whatever it is that can make acne. I don't create it, I don't think. And I don't know. They said usually it's supposed to be for life. Damn. But um, they said some people have to go back on it like 15, 20 years later. Damn. That's amazing, Mel. But I haven't but, had – I didn't have bad side effects with it like other people yeah, can't have. Yeah. Well, I think it's just awesome that like, like you said that, you know, you waited a long time to do it, but you finally did it and it worked. Yes, so it maybe works. that's I, just something I need to do. I think it's because it's such a powerful drug. They want you to try a bunch of other things mm -hmm. first before they mm -hmm. put you on it. And then you're on it for like six to eight months. But it doesn't work for like the first three. Like you're mm -hmm. like, I'm taking this medicine. You have to have blood work every month, pregnancy tests. But mm -hmm. then when three and four months start rolling around, I was like, damn. Because I didn't get acne until my early 30s. Mm -hmm. And I got cystic acne and it. It was so hard. bad. That was, it, it would hurt. be like big boils on your face. Like it yeah. was really bad for a while. And when it I was, look back at pictures, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. That's actually, I actually started losing weight because of my acne. The first time people were like, you need to lose some weight. That'll mm -hmm. help with it. It didn't. Because I lost yeah. a ton of weight. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, newsflash, nope. No, but no, it looks, it looks really great. And the fact that it stayed this way for so long is awesome. And I don't do anything. I've kept thinking I need to start like a routine or something, but I just wash it with water and put lotion on. That's awesome.
that's okay. That's all you need to do right now. Yeah. Um, but no, I got that black head sucker and like, it really does suck the shit out of your pores. I actually gave myself a hickey on my cheek, <laughs> like by accident, <laughs> because I was like, this is great. And I just started running it all over my face. And all of a sudden, like I, I like pulled it off and it's like, boop. and I was like, oh my God, I have a hickey on my cheek. I forgot to tell you. Because I have laser hair removal, and I haven't mm -hmm. gone in down on my vagina. Mm -hmm. But I have really thin hair to begin with when it comes in. But a little bit has come in. I can't go in because quarantine. So I bought a waxing kit, and I wax myself. Mm -hmm. I've never waxed myself before. How did it go? What did you think? It went fine. I got. I can link it to some of the ladies if you guys want. I got this beginner kit where you don't have to even hit it, uh, heat it up. Okay. But I don't, it took everything off, but I don't know. Like I said, I have very thin, fine hair, mm -hmm. so it's not much to take off. Yeah. And even when I was like, didn't have laser, it wasn't like, poof. Oh, I have like full bush. So I no, I just don't, I don't have hair anywhere really, but it came off easy, but I don't know if it would do the same if you had a thicker hair. I'm not sure. I have really thick, dark hair, except on my arms, which is weird. Like my arm hair is very fine and blonde, but like my underarm hair, my leg hair, my bush, like we're talking like 70s porn. It is like, if I don't shave it, it's out of control. I saw this one thing where it's an at-home laser kit. Have you seen that where it's like, it's like this big and it has a light like on the end of it and you like hold it down and you go over your skin and it does like the laser over. I guess I think like, my mom tried that. I got at home laser kit. Some of the reviews were mixed. Some of them were really good and some of them weren't so good. So I'm like, I don't I, know which one to believe. So if I you think have it just works on some people and doesn't work on yeah, others. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was something like I had them do my underarms. Um, when I was doing all this stuff, like I had, um, I had like a bunch of moles removed and stuff and they did like laser stuff there. I was like, yeah, I had my arm, underarms. It'd be great. So I did that and it worked really well under my arms because the hair was dark and they said it's like the darker the hair, the better it does. She was like really fine blonde hair. Cause I was like, can you do my mustache please? And she's like, no, she says too blonde. She's, it'll just make your face really red and break out. She was like, it won't take the hair away. I was like, fuck you. I just hate to shave. That's why I got it done down there. I was like, I, yeah. I don't. I refuse to shave down there. I'm like, yeah. why? I don't like the way it grows in and it's uncomfortable. Yeah. I just, my husband said he didn't care either way. I was like, I'm just going to do the laser thingy. Yeah, that's And awesome. get it over with. Because I don't, I haven't probably shaved my legs in, I don't know, months. <laughs> but you can't see it. I mean, you can't like see it. Like if I could yeah. show you my leg, there's no, you don't see any hair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's just so fine. Well, good for you, Mel. You it's one what? of the Fuck lucky you. things I have. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fuck <laughs> you. Yeah. And your fine fucking hair on your fine fucking legs. <laughs> but hey, you, your hair is thick. Like even on your head. On my head. Yeah. Thin. I have like so thick the, the rest of my hair. body hair is like that. It's thin and silky mm -hmm. like my hair. <laughs> No, mine's definitely like on top of my head. Thick, unruly, angry. <laughs> so um, this past weekend, we, you know, I don't know if I told you, but we have a movie poster that we got after Christmas and it's called like 100 Movies to Watch with Your Kids. Did I tell you about this? It's like a scratch off movie poster. We put it up in our in our kitchen, like inside the pantry because it's right next to the lounge where we all watch TV and stuff. And um, it's, this whole wall or uh, this whole poster of different like scratch off movies. Excuse me. And it's, um, it's movies you can watch with your kids. So we go through and we've been watching all of the movies. I think I talked about it because I said, no, like, I think, you know, you just told me you watched that movie that was sad. Oh you yeah, me was Little part Women. Thing. Yes, we did the Little Women because the I was like nobody told me Beth died, which is fucked up. Anyway, so we watched that with the kids. I was like, this is not a kids movie. But um, so one of the movies that was on there was The Chronicles of Narnia, mm -hmm. and I, I've never seen it. Have you seen that movie? Mm -mm. I had never watched it. I read the book I think when I was probably in like elementary school, middle school, or something. I think I might have read the. Oh, I yeah. think it was like a required reading, but um, it was so good. And like the movie was fantastic and my kids loved it. And so we ended up, there's three movies. We watched one, one night. And then the next night we watched the second one and we haven't watched the third yet. Cause it's, I think it's the last one. 
And so we were saving it until this weekend. And I was like, well, let's not watch it, you know, because it's like, I think they're like over two hours. They're like, I think they're almost three hours, but they're really long. But I just wanted to say, like, for anybody out there that's looking for, like, a, a movie to watch or something with your kids, like, those hold up. They were really fun. They were cool fantasy. They kept my kids' attention. Like, really, really super cool. So, if, you, uh, if you're looking for something, definitely check out the Chronicles of Narnia because we missed it the first time around. So, I have um, lady listener emails. Do you want to do that? Oh. All right. I, these are in no particular order on how I printed them out. And most of them I did not read. <laughs> I just was like, I get them and I drop them in a folder. And then when it comes to recording day, I just print them out. This is entitled Book Covers. Hey, lady DJs. So I've been listening to your podcast for over a year now, and I'm finally catching up. I'm on the week where y'all are talking about pref preferred book covers, and I love to see dark-haired, curvier ladies or the rough, dirty men on the front. Blonde women are beautiful and clean-cut men are nice, but you never see dark-haired ladies, rugged men on the front. Thank you for all y'all do and being so funny and relatable. Keep up, keep on with the fun, Chelsea. It's how do you hard find to find blondes. I was going to say, Mel, as a brunette, how do you feel about that? Mm, it doesn't matter to me, but like I said, it's, it's hard to find blonde on some of the photo stock and stuff. I've had a problem with it before without them looking like a porn star. <laughs> I think that is really true though. Like to find a, a sexy woman that's not like that still, that still looks innocent because mm -hmm. you know, all our books, they're all virgins. So it's mm -hmm. hard to find someone that sort of portrays that role. But you know, I wish, you know, in a perfect world, all the people on the covers would match the characters in the books. I wish that was possible. You know, I think when maybe you go through a traditional publisher or something that has a bigger budget with covers and stuff, they're able to do photo shoots or, and, and cast those roles to look like the characters. But most people, most self-publishing authors are just going through stock images. They're going through a catalog of images. So it's just really, what do we have to choose from? You know, yeah. it's not always our first desire. There's an animal behind you. Is it Teddy? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> He's back. No, it's my cat's jelly. Okay. This one's entitled Random Thoughts. Hey, Lady DJs, as I lay awake at 1 a.m. this morning, these were random thoughts circling my brain. Oh, my God. It's just like bullet points. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm great. ready for that. Ready. Leah, thank you for recommend recommendation of Dairy Girls. I binged it, and it was fabulous. I love all the characters and their unique quirks, but my favorite character has to be the principal, Sister Michael. Yes! Not only are their lines perfect, her delivery and facial expressions were on point. She is fucking awesome. I'm telling you, if you have not watched Dairy Girls, go to Netflix. Watch it now. Watch it two times because you love me and that show needs all of it. This says, Mel, I'm curious to know how big your cat has gotten. <laughs> He's big. How big is he? How much does he weigh, you think? I haven't had him weighed in a while. I know that some people get it obsessive about weighing their main coon and I was like, I know what it's like to get on the scale. <laughs> But no, he's probably like, he's got to be 15 pounds. Cause Fuck you. When he was 10 pounds when he got fixed at like six months. I think ours weighs like eight pounds. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. The one that just walked behind me was like, is eight pounds jelly, our girl. Yeah, yeah. But he's just really big. and But a lot of it is fluff. I'll post the picture in here. With the okay, do it. Yes. All right. This oh, this is I just finished the Filthy Rich Americans by Nikki Sloan this week. Oh my God. Those scenes with the father in law are the most dirty scenes I have ever read. Wow. Thank you for that recommendation. I will say, like, they are so dirty. Like all, all the trigger warnings. It's dirty. It's filthy. I was so turned on. Okay. <laughs> this is a next bullet point. I had my birthday and my husband gave me the perfect gift by making me dinner, doing the dishes, and then letting me have sole control over the movie we were going to watch for the evening. Basically, it was a fantastic evening. What I chose and what I am recommending to all of you is the 2018 movie Book Club with Jane Fonda, Candace Bergen, Diane Keaton, and Mary Steenberg. 
They want to spice up their monthly book club and decide to read the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy. It was simultaneously hilarious and heartwarming. And I think the best thing of the entire movie is the portrayal of these women's long-term friendship with each other. You don't often get to see that on TVs or movies. And it was absolutely beautiful. I love that. Uh, LB sent me. Oh, wait. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Let's finish her email. Finally, I need to know if I'm the only one who gets anxiety while reading scenes of all night sex romps. The entire time I'm thinking and worrying the poor heroine's going to get a UTI. Maybe it's just me because I'm prone to getting them, but I just had to ask. <laughs> I I've thought that. about it before. Well, our sex scenes are so fast. The guys are just so eager. They keep coming. They just come and come and come. This is a big thank you to DJ. A big thank you to DJs for continually making my honor my hour long commute to and from work enjoyable. Love a loyal listener, JC. Yes, you can read my initials out loud. Good because I just did. P.S. Please let Tessa know us lady listeners are all thinking of her and praying for her and her husband to have a speedy recovery. That's so sweet. Thanks, JC. Oh, yeah. LB sent me a video the other day, and it had every. It was a bright. It was a like a. A shower, or what do you call that, where you're getting married? Bridal uh, shower. Yeah, a bridal shower, but you go out and drink. Bachelorette party. Bachelorette party. And they were all dressed up as old ladies. That's it amazing. was fucking awesome. They were out there, like, pounding shots. They're all in, like, gray wigs and, like, old lady dresses and canes and stuff. And she was like, this is what we're doing for your 40th. And I was like, yes, now you're I'm talking. Amazing. I was like, that sounds, I was like, that is exactly it. I want like golden girls theme. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but I was like, I want glamour grandma. I was like, let's do slutty grandmas. That's the theme. <laughs> sure. All right. This one uh, is entitled breakdown. Hey, lady DJs. I'm listening to today's podcast where Leah is talking about her breaking point. I actually paused it so I could come write this email. Your word struck a chord with me and I'm sobbing at my desk because someone gets it. I am one of those single moms you were talking about struggling through this messy every day with no one to help. Even though you have your husband to help and it's not exactly the same. It's enough for, for me in this moment just to hear that it's not just me. Logically, I know that there are lots of parents out there going through the same thing, but hearing it from someone I quote unquote know it just takes a little bit of the load off, and I want to thank you for telling your story. I swear, listening to you ladies is better than therapy for me. Thanks for entertaining me each week and for keeping it real. Lady listener, Crystal. Aww. So sweet. I'm so glad that, like, I, there was a lot of people who reached out, and I thought that was so sweet. The people that posted in headquarters, too, that were like, I feel the same way. Like, you know, that were just so supportive and and like we really ha shared this kinship, I think, yeah. you know, women who are just overloaded in this situation e with or without kids. You know, I think if you're a woman right now, I think this is we understand your pain. You're not alone. So I love yeah. that that we have this to share. So thanks for sending that email. I appreciate it. I this think people underestimate how much it affects them. And oh, yeah. Something kind of triggers it because you like I think we've said multiple times I'm always feel like I'm on the verge to cry even yeah. though nothing's gone bad today but I'm mm -hmm. I could do it yeah, yeah at any moment I could there could be like a sweet commercial like, oh my god and everybody's yeah. like why are you crying I'm like I don't know it's just not long enough in there <laughs> you know and like I was I was cleaning up after dinner tonight and my husband he had to work late so he came home he was eating as we were all finishing and he was like thanks for cooking dinner I was like Sure, it's the same thing I do every night. I, I cook dinner. That's it. That's all I fucking do around here. And it was just like, he just looked at me. And I'm like, it's been a long day. <laughs> like, like, I didn't know. He was just like, I was just saying thank you for dinner. I didn't need to like start something. Are you okay? It was like, it was like you could tell he was like, oh shit, what did I do? <laughs> I wonder he snuck in and got the cookies. I know he was like singing here real quiet. Like I'm not messing anything. I'm just, I was like, do you leave me $4? He was like, don't you, he was like, don't you owe me 17? I was like, shut up. <laughs> I took cash out of his wallet the other day to make change for our cookies. I was like, I'm going to take all your money. <laughs> all right. This one's entitled Valentine's day. Hey lady DJs. I have a Valentine's day story for you. It was the best Valentine's day I've ever had. It was back when my husband and I were dating. It was our first Valentine's Day. We had been dating for a year. He was away on an, uh, at an academy, 
So I knew we weren't going to be together. It was okay. I was okay with that because we had planned on celebrating that weekend when he came home. He surprised me by sending a dozen red roses to me at work. After I got off work, I kept calling him, but no answer. I tried for three hours and nothing. Finally, he calls me. I was so happy just to speak with him. Then he tells me to open the door. He drove three hours just to see me. My sweet man had to turn around and leave after only a few hours and hardly any sleep. He gave me diamond earrings. I love them, of course, but I all I had for him was a box of conversation hearts. I felt so bad. I didn't have much money at the time, and I was planning on getting him a gift later in the week since I wasn't going to see him for a few days. Over 20 years and five kids later, and we're still madly in love. That's so oh, God, I love that. Thanks for everything you do. I love the podcast and all your books. Keep up the good work. Sincerely, long-time listener, Julie. I love it. Oh, fucking melt my heart. I love that shit. I love it. Let's go into the final installment of Lonnie Ree, Spades Queen. We'll play that for you, and we'll see you on the other side. Bye, guys. Bye. Five. Danny. I glance over at the clock and groan. Holy cow, Jace will be arriving in 20 minutes to pick me up and I'm still lying in bed. Kicking the covers aside, I fly into the bathroom and rush through a shower. It looks like my hair is going up in a messy bun. 18 minutes later, I glance in the mirror and congratulate myself for pulling off a miracle. I've hidden the dark under eye circles and my face is glowing. There's a knock at the door and I take a deep breath before rushing out to open it. Jace looks up and smiles. Good morning, doll. His endearment sends happiness shooting through me and I smile back. Before I'm able to speak, he steps in and pulls me into his arms. My brain completely shuts down when his lips cover mine. This man can kiss. I forget about everything as my body melts into his. My mom clearing her throat behind us stops our kiss from getting out of control. Sorry. Ellie. Jace smiles at my mother over my head while still holding me close to his body. His huge erection is pressing against my stomach, and I fear my mother will be scandalized if she gets a peek of what's really happening in her hallway. We're going to be late if we don't get a move on. As he pulls me out the front door, he keeps his back to my mom. He opens the car door and helps me in. After hooking my seatbelt, he whispers in my ear, you pack quite a punch, though, before slamming the car door shut. I lean back in the seat and attempt to control my rapid breathing as I watch him walk around the front of the sports car. He must have left his coat in the car because he's wearing a dark green sweater stretched across his massive chest with faded blue jeans that hug his tight ass perfectly. I'm jealous of the wind as it ruffles his jet black hair. He asks, do you mind if we run by the club? after sliding into the leather seat. I'm about to remind him of my age when he glances at me out of the corner of his eye and assures me, the bar is closed and I'll be with you the entire time. As he drives down the road, I search my brain for something to talk about. I like the warm seats. I end up blurting the first thing that comes to mind. Wanting to impress him, I wore a short off-white leather skirt and matching fuzzy sweater, he keeps glancing over at my legs, and his heated stare causes goosebumps to break out all over my exposed skin. After Jace presses a button, the temperature in the car suddenly increases. You're cold. He grumbles. I'm actually burning up, but I'm not sure how to tell him. As we pull into the garage next to Wild Aces, I breathe a sigh of relief. One more minute in this car, and I might have lost my mind. He walks me around and shows me the bar. This time, being here doesn't terrify me, so I actually take the time to look around and take in the place. There's a circular-shaped dance floor taking up the entire back of the room. It's lined by floor-to-ceiling speakers and intricate lighting. Dark wood and burgundy leather booths fill the bar. Jace leads me upstairs and shows me around the private VIP section, filled with glass-top tables and flat-screen televisions. Wow, I turn to him. How do you guys keep it all under control? Jace takes my hand and laces our fingers together. 
We stumbled a few times at first, but learned from our mistakes. As he leads me down the darkened hallway, I realize we're going to his office, and apprehension hits me. Before we get to his office door, another man walks toward us. Although he's insanely handsome, I don't feel any of the lust shooting through my body like I experience with Jace. Jace stops and introduces us. Danny, this is my partner, Vince. I shake his hand and wait silently as they discuss club business. Two more outrageously hot men walk up and Jace pauses his conversation to introduce me to Ryan and Link. Hi, it's nice to finally meet you. Link smiles down at me. I'm sure he recognizes me from the first night when I snuck in, but he avoids mentioning it. Jace wraps his arm around my shoulders and talks to his partners for a few minutes before squeezing me. Come on, doll. He looks down at me and winks, and I almost melt on the spot. I have something to show you in my office. As he leads me the rest of the way down the hall, I hear Link ask one of the other men, Want to place bets on what he's showing her? My face turns almost as red as my hair. Jace leads me into the office and turns to lock the door. I swallow and watch him walk behind his desk and push a button on the wall. The black shades lining the walls around his desk slowly slide open, revealing a glimpse of the entire club. Don't you feel like you're on display? I bite my lip and look out over the empty bar. It's privacy glass. He whispers behind me as he wraps his arms around my body. You're so fucking beautiful. He kisses me lightly on the back of the neck, then leans over to gently bite my ear. Having you all to myself is putting wicked thoughts in my mind. I glance over my shoulder and look up into his serious blue eyes. What's holding you back? He groans and spins me in his arms. I wanted to make sure you're ready for me. As he takes my hand and slides it down the front of his body, my heart begins to pound. I gasp when our joined hands cover his massive erection. Once I've had you, there's no way I'll ever be able to let you go. His erection thumps against my palm, causing me to groan. He looks deep into my eyes, and I realize his words should scare the hell out of me, but instead... They send happiness shooting through my soul. I throw my arms around his neck and whisper, I'm ready. His blue eyes darken to nearly black as he holds me tight. After roughly pressing his lips against mine, he flicks his tongue along the seam of my lips, seeking entry into my mouth. When I part my lips for his assault, he devours the inside of my mouth. His kiss blows my mind, and I barely notice when he pulls back, breaking the kiss. I need to get you back to my house. He lays his forehead against mine. I refuse to make love to you the first time on a sofa in my office. I smile up and shrug. What are we waiting for? That seems to be all the invitation he needs. He bundles me out of the club and into his car before I can blink. Don't touch me or say a word. He growls as he pulls the car into traffic. I'm barely hanging on and I need to concentrate to get us to my house. I follow his instructions and lean my head back against the headrest to watch the trees pass by the window. I'm relieved when he pulls into the garage of his large brick two-story home. Your house is beautiful. I sigh. I'll give you a tour in the morning. He rushes around to help me from the car. After lifting me into his arms, he moves quickly through the house without turning on any lights. I hold on tight and take in as much of the stunning interior as possible as we pass through. He carries me into the last bedroom at the end of the hall and lays me on the bed. Stepping back, he pulls his sweater over his head and I get my first look at his masculine chest. My eyes roam over the hard muscles and continue moving down his body as he unsnaps his jeans and pushes them over his hips. He reaches into his black boxers and strokes his dick. Are you going to take those off? I'm not sure where my bravery is coming from. Eventually. He smirks and runs his hands slowly up my bare legs. I like this skirt. 
Jace stares into my eyes as he slips a finger underneath my skirt and runs it along the top of my thigh. It's way too fucking short for you to wear in public, though. He winks and leans down to run his tongue over the skin his fingers were just torturing. I arch my back as electric currents run through me. Jace works quickly to pull my clothes from my body. I forget all about his caveman statement when he places little kisses along my hip bone. He slowly kisses his way up my body and stops to run his tongue around the underside of each of my boobs, then lightly licks straight up the center of my chest. I cry out his name and he covers my lips with his and kisses me while rolling my nipple between his thumb and finger. Jay slowly kisses his way down my neck, making me shiver. As his hand slides between us and softly brushes over my clit, my whole body lights up. He repeats the actions several times, and I realize I'm chanting his name. I like the sound of my name on your lips. He looks into my eyes and growls. Let's see how loud you can scream. He moves down my body and pulls my legs apart. While staring into my eyes, he raises one of my knees and places a soft kiss on it before draping it over his shoulder. Don't move. My heart beats out of control in my chest as he leans forward to swipe his tongue up the center of my pussy. That's a good start. He mumbles against my sensitive flesh when I cry out. The tiny vibrations along my clit nearly cause me to come from that alone. He alternates between sucking and licking, and I'm nearly crazy from the sensations assaulting me. I can make a meal out of you. He pushes his tongue deep into my wet center. Okay. I'd agree with just about anything as he slides a huge finger into my tight opening. He stops knuckle deep, and I arch my back at the slight pinch of pain. I love you. He whispers and places little kisses along my hip. As he moves back up my limp body, his words finally register, but I'm too consumed by the sensations bombarding me to respond. He kisses me while pumping his finger slowly. His cock leaves a trail of wetness along my skin, and I realize he removed the black boxers. When he leans down and bites my nipple, a sudden orgasm sweeps through my body, and I cry out. I love you too, I manage as my body recovers from the overwhelming pleasure. He runs his tongue along the side of my neck, catching a tiny bead of sweat, and I feel his lips turn up into a big smile. Thank God. He breathes against my earlobe before biting it gently. Kidnapping might be bad for my reputation. He teases as he runs his cock through my wetness, I feel his tip pressing against my opening and tense. He kisses my lips, then pushes forward and swallows my gasp. There's a sharp sting and I flinch. Jace pauses and looks into my eyes while brushing the sweaty hair off my cheek. You're so tight. He groans and kisses me. Our tongues tangle and I dig my nails into his side and hold on. He slowly withdraws and I cry out. Tell me what you need. He begs as he thrusts forward again. All the sensations have stolen my voice. The pain is dulling and I force myself to relax. His hips move faster and pleasure quickly overrides the pain. When he rubs gently on my clit, my body implodes. Stars burst behind my closed eyelids. As my senses return, I open my eyes and watch him find his release. His eyes darken to nearly black as his cock twitches deep inside me. I feel wetness filling me and silently thank God I'm on the pill. Jace rolls to the side and pulls me into his arms. As I'm falling asleep, I snuggle next to him and sigh. This relationship is moving at warp speed, but in my heart, I know he's the one. Six, Jace. I blink awake and feel her curvy body snuggled against mine. Damn, I realize I actually slept for more than six hours and my body doesn't know how to respond. Danny's fragrant auburn hair lays across my chest. 
and the sound of her soft, delicate snores fill the room. There's no doubt in my mind that I intend to wake up like this every day for the rest of my life. She's young, and I know I'll have to make allowances for the difference in our ages, but I'll do whatever it takes to ensure my doll is happy. The throbbing in my cock warns me that my girl is going to need extra attention when she wakes up. Her breathing changes, and she lifts her head off my chest to smile sleepily at me. Good morning. Good morning, doll. I lean up to kiss her soft lips. Come on. I slip out of the bed and lift her into my arms. You need a hot bath to relax your sore muscles. After setting her on her feet, I turn and adjust the water. Thanks for taking care of me, she tells me shyly, and my heart squeezes in my chest. As she runs her hand over my back, I close my eyes and count to ten. Having her this close without making love to her again is difficult. My throbbing cock is rebelling against waiting. I love you. I remind her of the words I spoke last night. Each time I say them, I realize how true they are. It kills me to think of you in pain. I help her into the bath, then kiss her nose. I'm going to throw together some breakfast for us. Take your time relaxing. While the coffee is brewing, my phone rings, and I glance at the screen and groan. Link wouldn't call this early unless there was a problem last night. My answer is call. What happened? One of the new bouncers let two girls in. Fucking hell. I run my hand on the back of my neck and groan. The last thing I want after spending my first night with Danny is to deal with this shit. Is it under control or do I need to come down now? I pour myself a cup of coffee and listen to Link explain that he's taking care of everything. He fired the bouncer, sent the bonus to the security company, and is heading to bed. The only drawback is I'll have to work for him tonight. Fuck. Danny walks through the door in the middle of the story, and I finish the conversation with Link and hang up. Turning, I pour my girl a cup of coffee. I add two sugars and cream, how I've learned she drinks it, and hand the mug to her. I have to work tonight. She takes a sip and shrugs. Do you want to drop me off at home on the way? I place a finger under her chin and lift it, making sure she's looking in my eyes. No, I want you to stay here and wait for me. She doesn't argue, so I start her breakfast. After we eat, I convince her to spend the rest of the weekend with me. I decide to take my SUV since the sports car has no back seat. On the way to her house to pick up a few clothes, she fidgets in the seat and I look over and ask, What's wrong? Danny bites her lip and shrugs. My mom is going to have a hard time with this. I reach over for her hand and lift it to my lips. After placing a kiss on her soft skin, I reassure her. Everything will work out. I smile at her. I promise you. When we arrive, Danny rushes off to pack a bag and Ellie sits at the small breakfast bar and glares at me. My daughter is a 19-year-old college student. I've been preparing myself for this conversation since I found my girl. Taking a deep breath, I lay my cards on the table. I fell in love with your daughter the first time I laid eyes on her. Ellie stares at me and I walk over and sit on the bar stool next to her. I know it sounds crazy. She shakes her head and I continue, but I can't picture my life without her in it. I'll do anything for Danny, even if it means slowing things down but I won't ever give her up. As Ellie takes a drink of her coffee and contemplates my words, I worry a little. She looks at me and sighs. Danny is an adult. I can't live her life for her, but if you want my blessing, you'll need to prove to me that you're telling the truth. That's fair. I smile at her. Over the next three months, I spend all my free time courting both my girl and her mom. Her sister and the big asshole who I first saw hugging my girl come into town, and I finally get the chance to make a better impression. Love turns us all into morons. Gage slaps me on the back as we watch the girls chattering away in the living room. You've won Skyler over. He points his beer at me and smiles. 
and Ellie isn't looking for a hitman anymore. He shrugs and laughs. Win-win. He's right. It took time and a ton of effort, but Ellie is finally warming up to me. I wanted to ask Danny to marry me the first night we made love, but I realize she needs time, and her mother needs proof of my intentions. To accomplish both, I'm taking our relationship slow. Well, somewhat slow. We spend every free moment together, and I'll kill any man who looks at my girl. But I'm going to let her finish college before I ask her to marry me. Even the waiting might kill me. As Danny walks up and wraps her soft arms around me, I lean and kiss her. I love you. I whisper against her lips, and she smiles at me. I love you, too. It's enough for now. Two years later. My woman graduates with an accounting degree today, and I've planned a special night to celebrate. As I watch her walk across the stage, Ellie leans over and whispers, Thank you. Skylar looks at us and frowns, but we ignore her. I glance at Ellie and shrug. Sorry? For waiting and letting her have this. There are tears in the older woman's eyes and my heart melts. I know you're deeply in love with each other. She points her head at the stage and smiles. I'm so happy my baby is getting everything she deserves in life. I pat her hand and smile back. I glance at Ellie, Skylar, and Gage before whispering, I'm lucky to have found all of you. It's the truth. Danny's family has become like my own. After a small family dinner, I take my girl to the Four Seasons Hotel for a night out to celebrate her achievement. I'm hoping that by the end of the night, we'll have something else to celebrate along with her graduation. Oh my goodness. Danny walks into the room ahead of me and gasps. This is way too much. I kick the door closed and wrap my arms around her. Nothing is too much for you. After taking her hand and leading her to the bed, I turn her and slowly unzip her flirty summer dress. My knuckles graze her soft skin and she shivers. Are you purposefully torturing me? Yep. I lean over and place soft kisses down the center of her back as I pull the straps off her shoulders and let the dress slide to the floor. Naughty girl. I slap her naked ass and she groans, walking around without underwear. I did it for you. She cries out when I lean over and gently nibble where her ass and back meet. I suck the delicate skin between my teeth. Leaving a purple mark on her pale skin helps calm my inner beast. She shivers and the caveman within me is satisfied. Thank you. Slipping my fingers between her legs, I find her soaking wet. I press a finger against her clit as my cock steadily leaks calm down my pants leg. I appreciate your thoughtfulness. I grab her hand and place it on the intricate bedspread, then give her a little push. Lean forward. Once I have her positioned with her legs slightly spread, I rip off my clothes and drop them on the side of the bed before staring down at her luscious ass. I like seeing your ass ready for my punishment. Danny looks over her shoulder and grins. I'm not sure what you're punishing me for, but... I'm not complaining. I smack her left ash cheek. You walked around in a loose, flowy dress all day without underwear. Another smack lands and she squirms. One good gust of wind in all of Seattle would have gotten a peek at my pussy. I didn't take them off until right before we left my mother's house. She pushes back into my hand as I rub the slightly reddened skin. But feel free to continue spanking me. She shrieks when I suddenly pick her up and toss her on the bed. Later, I promise, as I pull her legs apart and lean down to run my tongue through her juices. Her taste blasts through me, and I squeeze my cock before I come from licking her pussy. I'm not going to last tonight. I whisper against her soft skin and nibble my way up her luscious body. I push into her wet center and groan. She digs her sharp little nails into my shoulders as I thrust into her body. I love you. 
I whisper against the side of her neck and feel an orgasm approaching. Her silky pussy grips my cock tightly while spasming around it, and there's no holding my climax back. She falls asleep with her head resting on my shoulder and her hand draped over my chest. I carefully reach down and feel around for my pants. I slide my hand into the pocket and pull out the ring I bought her two years ago. It takes some maneuvering, but I manage to slip the diamond solitaire on her ring finger without waking her up. As I doze off, visions of our life together float through my mind. I wake up to her leaning over me, placing little kisses all over my face. Oh my God. She pulls back and stares down at me and I see tears forming in her bright green eyes. She holds up her hand with the ring sparkling on her finger. I love it, she smiles. Not as much as I love you, though. I pull her close and kiss her before taking her face between my hands and staring into her eyes. I love you, too. Now, put me out of my misery and tell me you'll be my wife. From the first moment I saw you, I knew you were meant to be mine. My love, my wife, my queen. Let's do this. Epilogue. Jace. Five years later. Vince strolls into my office and laughs. Your little princess is giving Link a makeover. Fuck. An hour ago, Link promised to watch my four-year-old daughter while I finished payroll. Danny was awake most of the night with our new son, and I hated to leave our energetic daughter at home with her. What is he thinking? I ask as I rush past him on my way to find Olivia and her godfather. That he gets to go home to no kids. Vince calls behind me and I flip him off over my head. I storm into the room and find Link sitting at the large conference table letting my daughter paint his face with markers. Have you lost your mind? I roar. You forgot her makeup set, he shrugs. Olivia Marie. I walk over and stare down at my stubborn daughter, put the markers away and go wash her hands. She pouts but hops off the chair and listens to my command. I watch her walk into the bathroom and turn to my dumbass best friend. Why don't you just say no to her? Now she's going to be coloring her little brother with fucking markers. When he stands up and smirks, I barely resist the urge to punch him. That's your problem. One day, I'm going to get revenge on you. He looks at me and raises an eyebrow. I'm keeping track of all the crazy shit you let my kid get away with, and I swear I'm giving it back to you tenfold when you have a child. He shakes his head at me and walks toward the door. I don't ever have to worry about that happening. I'm 38 years old and single. Kids aren't in my future. He turns before leaving and smiles. I'll finish up the payroll. Why don't you take Olivia home and give Danny a break from the little prince? First, you might want to attempt to remove your permanent marker eyeshadow. As he groans and looks up at the ceiling, I shrug. It doesn't go with your outfit. I watch him walk away and sigh. He's the last single wild ace, but I know that will change one day. Olivia walks out and smiles. She's a miniature version of her mother, and my heart squeezes in my chest as I look down at her. Come on, love bug. Let's go home and see Mommy and Gabe. The End You may have noticed that Vince and Ryan find their soulmate somewhere in this story's timeline. Since it encompasses seven years, I didn't want to give too much of their stories away. Keep an eye out. All the Wild Aces have books coming soon. Vince's story, King's Love, Wild Aces Book 2 is next. If you want to read Gage and Skylar's story, Snow's Spell, Taming the Dock, Book 1, is available on Amazon. Barrett and Molly's story, Hail Mary, is part of the Lady Boss Press, quick snap novella series, and is available now on Amazon. This has been Spades Queen, Wild Aces Book One by Lonnie Ree. Read for you by Veronica Fox. Welcome back.
Hi. So thanks for listening to Spades Queen by Lonnie Reed this week. Remember to check our social media on Facebook and Instagram for all her other stuff. And check the show notes too. We're going to link everything down below um, that we've talked about and all of her stuff. Um, next week we have Olivia Booth um, with an audiobook teaser. It's called Wicked Embrace. Um, she is amazing. I've, I've been talking to her for a while about this. She's got like a whole series she's promoting and she created these audiobooks to share. So I'm super excited to listen to it. Um, so c- join us next week and we're going to have all the, the info on her books and what she's got coming out and what's next. Um, remember to subscribe to our newsletter and check out um, Be Mine or Else. That's on sale for 99 cents this month. Don't forget to get that. And then we have a book out tomorrow. Maybe yeah. if I get a cover. The 12th. Yes. If we have a cover in time, if not, just check our Alexa Raleigh <laughs> page. Um, I believe we decided to call it. Hold on. I have it right here. Nope. Not that one. <laughs> We're going to call it the loyal groom. Yes. Um, the first one. Yes. The loyal groom. So that should be out. If not tomorrow, sometime very soon. So okay. check it out. All right. That's it. Oh, God. It's okay. Tell them what to do, Leah. <laughs> Fuck your day up. Make stay your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. You could take a look in a book that's fine. Or you could sit back, relax, and unwind and read me romance. Read, read me romance.